Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Jones. Uh, I'm the instructor for Math 1420 College Trigonometry. Um, if you're watching this video, you should be enrolled in this class, um, and you probably found this on D2L on our My Courses page, so good for you already being there. Um, I'm basically going to use this video uh, to give a little quick video tour of our course, as well as while I'm doing that, kind of talk about um, how the course will go and what, what's, what you're expected to do and what I'm expected to do and things like that. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. I am going to kind of switch back and forth between instructor view and student view just to more easily show you certain things. Um, but where we are here, this is our homepage. Um, I will mention not everybody that's watching this video is from Front Range Community College. This is a pooled section. Uh, but the nice thing is that you access this course just like you would any other course that's run through D2L. Um, so you see it right right in your in your list of courses and you come right here and everything should look pretty similar even if you are from a college other than Front Range Community College. Um, so let's go ahead. This is our homepage. You'll see announcements here. Um, this is the first announcement I put just in case anybody happens to see the course early. That'll disappear. You probably won't even ever see this other than in this video. Uh, you'll see announcements from me, important things, anything I post. You're expected to read that, so definitely keep, keep an eye out um, for that as well. Um, I'm basically going to go through this top bar up here. Let's start with content. Let's click on that and see, see where it takes us. Um, go ahead and actually click. Sweet. Uh, so we have this. Uh, you can see some of these things are hidden. You can see this top. That's for me just to see um, if I... Let's go ahead and do this. Let, let's view as students and go back in there so you can see exactly what it would look like uh, for you. Um, again, announcements there. But for you, you'll see this whole table of contents on the left-hand side, very cleanly organized. Um, I, I, I'm a very organizational person, so I try to make this really nice and easy for you to, to follow through. Uh, we start with two welcome modules. This is information about the course, a um, little instructor bio about myself, our course schedule, our course uh, syllabus. Uh, so you'll, you'll want to look at those, especially if you're not from Front Range. You really want to make sure you read through that course syllabus because we use the Front Range template, uh, the Front Range Community College template for that. So make sure you read through that carefully. Make sure you print out that course schedule if you if you get a chance and and. Uh, have that on you at all times so you can see when we have things, uh, assignments, and, and everything due. Um, unit circle handouts, that's something we're going to learn about in this course. That's just for much later. Um, you'll see that. My lab math, I'm going to skip that real quick. Uh, that's where the majority, actually almost all of your homework assignments are. Um, we're going to go to that a little bit later in the video. But I want to just start right here, click on week one. You can see on the left side, there's a lot of weeks here, 10 weeks. That's the whole course. And you can see the sections that we cover as well as the dates that they run. If you click on any of these, they it takes you to basically an overview of the week. So I have some fun pictures here that kind of are related to what we learned that week. I'll always put in bold purple, if applicable, that this week is weird. For example, our first week, um, the dates are a little bit different than we'll see going through the semester. We have things like spring break and whatnot. Um, you'll always see an important note there at the at, right after the first photo in purple, in bold, make sure you look at those. I have our learning objectives as well as our assignments that you're expected to do um, listed in every single one of these modules. In addition to that, I'll, I have links to all of the stuff that you'll need to do. As you can see, my lab math, I'll note that that's my lab math. Sometimes it's also called my math lab. MML or MLM. They're all the same thing. Just depends on who you're talking to. I tend to call it my math lab, uh, but they've kind of done some rebranding. So don't worry about that. It's all the same. Um, but this is where most of your homework is. Like I said, I'll click on that in a little bit. You can see some discussion topics here. We'll get into those a little bit more, but basically these weekly modules, let's go ahead and click on another one. Let's click on something like week six. Um, you can see a picture related to the week your learning objectives for each section, the assignments you're expected to do. And then here, this is a good, you got a bunch of video examples you can watch for, for help. You have a link to your homework assignments in, in my lab math, my math lab, and then you have discussion topics with links to them 
again, some videos to watch, things to do. So this is basically each one of these week weekly modules. You're going to just click on these. You're going to go through it. You're going to do all the stuff. That's what you do each week. Um, I will mention we do have a weird scenario for our spring break. Since this is a pooled section that encompasses a whole bunch of colleges in Colorado, not just Front Range, we all have different spring breaks. And how this works is we all have three, or there are, I should say, three different spring breaks. My spring break, since I am a Front Range teacher, is the first week. So that's from March 11th to March 17th. But then the subsequent weeks after that, some of our students will have that be their spring break and others have the, the other, you know, the other week, the last week is their spring break. This gets complicated, but basically I've figured out that the best thing to do in this scenario is I kind of just hand you two weeks worth of material and say, hey, you've got three weeks to do it. Whenever you want to take a week off, be my guest. Feel free. Take your spring break when you want to. Heck, Take it at a different week than your other spring break or your for your other classes, if you feel like. To me, it doesn't really make a difference. I'm going to hand you all of week four and all of week five material all on March 11th. And you have until April 1st to do all of that. Um, so with that said, you got to be a little bit careful in terms of procrastination. I know students can be can be a little bad about that. I was bad about it when I was a student as well. Um, but you're going to want to make sure you keep up with this stuff because this big three-week section is, is your spring break plus week four plus week five. Again, I have all of this stuff listed there. I've actually taken this module and split it into three separate modules with week four and week five. The third module you'll see is our exam. This is a little bit unfortunate from a scheduling perspective, but it's kind of the best I can do. Um, right after this week five material is when exam one needs to happen. Um, and so I have also lumped exam one into this big three week chunk of time. So I know it's a lie, it sounds like a lot, but we'll, we'll get through it during this March 11th to April 1st, you have week four material, homework discussions, week five material, homework discussions, and you have to take exam one. Um, so there's all that. I know it sounds like a lot, but it won't be as bad as it probably looks like here. So um, because you'll have a whole lot of time to do it. But basically, you can take your spring break whenever you want. Um, and you're kind of on your own on, on those three weeks instead of being um pigeonholed into weekly modules I'm, I'm giving you three weeks to just do two weeks worth of stuff plus an exam so um there will be announcements pertaining to all that as we get closer you don't have to worry about that specifically right now but i figured i'd point it out in this video um so yeah let's actually get into your assignments your homework what are you supposed to do um you know what have i set up for you to 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 work on right one thing that I'll mention is these video examples. You saw that. They're, those are great for specific examples of doing things such as graphing a sign transformation. Great. You can watch a video. You can learn more about that. Um, that being said, in terms of your main place to actually get information, if we go to this My Lab Math, again, My Math Lab, same name, um, You'll see this e-text right here. I'm not going to click on this because this will open up a whole other link. We don't need to get into that. But if you click on that, that'll take you to our online textbook. I am 100% expecting that you are reading through this and following along in our sections um, as we go through the semester. So definitely look at that. What I am going to click on, however, is I'm going to click on the course home for, for my math lab so we can take a look at, at what, you know, what you should be doing here. Um, as this loads, I'll, I'll reiterate that this is our primary place where you are doing your homework. Don't freak out. This looks like a lot, but I'll mention half of these assignments aren't actually graded things. They're just things you have to do as prerequisites for the quiz or for the homework. Um, if we just specifically highlight, let's just look at 6.1. You can see there's basically four things. There's a link to the e-text as well as video links for extra examples. 
I already showed you that you can access the e-text yourself straight from my courses, straight from D2L. But this is also there within my lab math, my math lab for you as well. So you can click there if you want to read the e-text section for 6.1. Right below that, we have the concept overview exercises. Think of this as a handful of questions just to kind of make sure you're ready for doing the homework, doing the quiz. Um, shouldn't be, shouldn't take too long. Um, these are graded in my, in, in my math lab, but, um, that's not it. They don't actually go over into my courses as a part of your official grade book. So you don't have to worry about that. You do have to do well enough on them to actually open up the quiz. You can see right there in the title, it says prerequisite for the quiz. So you have to do well enough on it to take the quiz, but it doesn't go towards your final grade, your letter grade, I should say. You obviously have a homework. You have a quiz at the end of every section just to test you. Um, make sure that you're, you know, make sure you're actually learning, learning the concepts. That happens for every single one of our sections. I can keep scrolling down. There's there's a lot of sections that we cover, um, but th this is this is your your weekly stuff. If you're paying attention, you can see the start dates and the due dates over here. I open everything at the beginning of the week. It's due at the end of the week. Um, and there you go, 11.59 p.m. for those that are curious. I know it doesn't say it right here, but due dates are always at 11.59 p.m. Um, and we'll scroll down a little bit. You'll see that exam one, and if I were to scroll down further, you'd see our other exams. They're in here. You will take your exams through uh, my math lab. Um, at the time of this video, I am unsure of whether or not we will use a online proctoring software called honor lock we may use that i'm not going to talk about it now because i'm not sure if we're going to use it uh, at the time of this video but um if we do end up using it i will post announcements uh and and describe it in good detail for you um but our exams are in my my math lab as well um so you'll access them there um, so this is this is my math lab. You can look at your grade book in here, but all the grades get transported over to my courses. So um, you probably won't do much in here other than just click on assignments and you'll see your assignments pop up um, right on the home page when you when you uh, go here. So uh, you access this just if we go back in the content section, my lab math course home. There's so many other things. I'll let you peruse those as you want. Uh, you can go straight to the grade book. You can go straight to the e-text. Like I said, you can go straight to the assignments list. Um, there's so many other things here that, that you can do. I'll let you kind of peruse those uh, as you as you wish. The other assignments that we saw um, in these weekly modules were discussions. Let's go ahead and go up to the top here. Let's click on discussions. We'll look at these. So these discussions are ways for you to interact with your fellow classmates um, and with me. So as you can see, I have week one discussions. I'll actually go ahead and just collapse this. So you can see then there's week two discussions. Then there's week three discussions, week four, and so on and so forth. Um, these discussions sometimes have articles to read, sometimes have videos to watch, and then they ask you a handful of questions. Um, Really, actually, I'll just specifically point out, uh, you can earn credit for this discussion by inserting a picture of the first period of the transformed sine or cosine graph that you have completed. I know that might sound like gibberish, but basically what it's saying is you can either successfully post a picture of you doing a problem, or if you're unsure, if you're confused on, on something in this topic, ask a question, post a, post a photo of your work, get to the point where you're stuck and ask a question and another classmate can help you um, answer that. I can help you answer that as well. And, and we basically have these forums, these threads that we can all communicate with each other. I will emphasize this only works if people actually communicate. So please reply to your classmates, help them out. Um, I want everybody to succeed. Um, so we do that by everybody helping each other. So you have a varying number of these per week. Um, if we look in week four, you have two of them. You can see them right here, graphing sine and cosine, graphing tangent and cotangent. If we go down to week five, um, there's just one of them. In other weeks, there's there's three. It, it's kind of varying depending on the week, but um, you can access these as I did from the discussions tab up at the top or from content if you go to a specific weekly module like week three, 
you have them linked right here. So they're just all right there for you to see. So either way that you want to, that's that's all good. Um, just to keep going through up here, quizzes, don't worry about that. We're not going to use that tab. Assignments, you almost don't need to worry about this. This right here is just where you will submit uh, pictures of your work uh, and note card for our exams. I don't bother putting like due dates on here. That should be pretty clear. After you take your exam, you upload a photo of your work here so that I can see it um, and so that I can grade it and give you partial credit, so on and so forth. Grades, I won't click on that. Um, actually, I will. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm in student mode. This shouldn't show everybody. Um, this is what you'll see here. I have everything in the grade book already ready to go. Discussion posts, 10% of your grade. You can see all the discussions there. My math lab homework, 20% of your grade. These will automatically sync as you do your homework. Usually give it a day or two to do the syncing. Um, quizzes on MML, again, my math lab, 10%. Exams down at the bottom, 20% for each exam. That gives you a total of 100% uh, for, for the class. Um, so you can see all of that right there. Class list here. Uh, I won't bother clicking on this, but uh, it it shows you all of your classmates, and you can message your classmates uh, directly. You know, if you make if you form study groups, you want to work with somebody, you have a question on on uh, something you want to ask a classmate, you can go there. Um, really, this is this is this is pretty much it. Um, I know maybe that some some of it sounds like a lot, some of it may not. Um, hopefully, I've made this pretty clear. But just let, let let's do a quick rundown, just just of everything. You know, I, I want to make sure that you're jumping into this course um, aware of what's coming at you, um, understanding what you're expected to do. Um, day one, when you watch this, as you watch this video. Click on these welcome tabs, learn, familiarize yourself with our course page, look at our syllabus, read it, um, understand the kind of overview of the course. Second thing, you got weekly modules. Click on them each week, go down the list, do the things that you're expected to do. I recommend reading the e-text first, watching these video examples after that working on some of those prerequisite my math lab assignments working on your homework studying a little bit more taking your quiz right all almost all of that happening in my math lab along the way do these discussion topics post some post some pictures of, of some work that you've done um on a problem that you've completed other people can comment on maybe if you made a mistake, they can point it out. Or maybe they can say, hey, this really helped me because you did it in a different way than me. Ask a question in these discussions. Um, get a, give a picture of your work and, and say, I don't know where to go from this step, right? And students can help you. Uh, your classmates can help you. So um, those are your weekly modules. Um, you got it all right there. Like I said, you can access discussions from up here if you want. Um Spring break is weird. We have a weird, unique schedule there. Should be very clear by the time we get there how that works. Um, you have exams that you'll take within my math lab. Like I said, we may or may not have a proctoring software at the time of this recording. I'm not sure, but we'll we'll get there. Um, I will mention our last two weeks of this course are just the exam two and the final exam back to back. No content covered. That is a large chunk of time for you to do one of one of uh, one of two things or, or both uh, you can study study a lot for for our exams you have a lot of time for, for these that, that you can study for that's great the other thing you could do um, is you could study a lot and take these exams on the earlier side and that maybe frees you up for some of your other courses and your other final exams um, the last recap that I'll, I, I've said this but this is a pooled section you may not be from front range I will mention that some of the dates, the important dates, like the first day of class, the last day of class, when you, the, the withdraw date, the attendance deadline, things like that, financial aid stuff, those dates are a little bit different. I have them all listed in our syllabus. Those are correct. I've double checked them. Please check those um, because they may be different, uh, sometimes even just off by one day. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll jump right into this on Monday, uh, February 19th, and... Our first week will go until the 26th, which is a Monday. And then for the most part, after that, we'll have weeks starting on Tuesday and ending on Monday. 
Some exceptions noted, as you can see right here on week three. But for the most part, Tuesday to Monday is our is our week. So um, there we go. Wonderful. Um, that's that's it for this video. Hopefully this wasn't too long. Uh, hopefully it gave you a good understanding. Um, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me either via email, um, ryan.jones at frontrange.edu. That's also in the syllabus. Um, or you can message me directly through D2L. Um, thanks for watching.